a nerve agent. Now, in this past incident, which uh, occurred over the weekend, uh, the uh, social media shows what uh, U.S. intelligence says are symptoms consistent mostly with chlorine, although there are uh, some people uh, in those pictures who appear to be uh, having a reaction more consistent with nerve agent. Mm -hmm. Now, that I think is why uh, uh, the Secretary of Defense can say, I believe there was a chemical attack, simply uh, looking at the uh, pictures and having experts tell you uh, that those symptoms are consistent with chlorine gas. Well, David, <clears throat> I'm just curious because the French president says he has proof the Assad regime is responsible. What additional evidence do you think he has? Or, or and, and, and by the way, how closely are the two countries working together in their response here? Well, I'm sure that they are, are sharing intelligence, and it simply may be that uh, uh, the two countries just have different uh, levels of, of proof. Uh, one, one country may uh, consider a volume of circumstantial evidence mm -hmm. proof. Another country may, uh, may say that's circumstantial, but it's not a uh, smoking gun. Right. Uh, and just when you, when you look at the, the pictures and you have experts tell you, yeah, that looks like people suffering from uh, chlorine gas, that does alone does not say who did it. Uh, in, in chlorine is an industrial agent, and it's conceivable that uh, the rebels who were uh, fighting in there could have gotten their hands on uh, chlorine and, and could have used it. If you can get solid evidence that it was sarin or some other nerve agent, then that uh, points a much more accusing uh, finger at the regime, since it is known uh, that they once had uh, sarin, and it is known that they once used sarin uh, a year ago uh, farther north in uh, in Syria. Indeed, that previous chemical attack was confirmed. Now, David, Secretary Mattis was also asked about his concerns in taking action in Syria. Here's what he said. There's a tactical concern, uh, ma'am, that civilian, innocent people, we don't add to any civilian deaths uh, and do everything humanly possible to avoid that. We're trying to stop the murder of innocent people. But on a strategic level, it's how do we keep this from escalating out of control? David, what is he referring to when he says escalating out of control? Well, he's, he's referring to the uh, Russian presence in Syria and the Russian threat that it will attempt to shoot down uh, any missiles that the U.S. Uh, f uh, fires at Syria, and not only attempt to shoot down missiles, uh, but it will go after the ships or aircraft that launch those missiles. Uh, now, uh, most experts I've talked to don't believe uh, Russia can shoot down many uh, of those missiles and, and don't believe Russia has the capability uh, to go uh, far out, uh, like a, uh, 600 miles out to, into the Mediterranean to go after a ship or a, uh, an aircraft that might have launched those missiles. But you have to take, uh, you have to take the Russian uh, head of the army uh, at his word, and that's, that's who made that original uh, threat, the mm -hmm. chief of the Russian general staff. So you have to take that into consideration, and I think that the main way that they will uh, do that is to uh, target only uh, facilities, if they launch a strike, target only facilities uh, that <clears throat> belong to uh, the Syrian military and stay away from all of the uh, installations where they know Russians are. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with that is that there are a lot of Russians in that country. And <clears throat> the U.S. doesn't know where every last one of them is. And so if there is an advisor in some Syrian uh, military facility that is a target, and the target's hit and the, and the Russian is killed, right, that's uh, a, it would be inadvertent on the part of the United States, but I'm not sure that would uh, cut much ice Russians. with the Russians. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Syria for a moment. Are Syrian forces taking President Trump's promise of a strike seriously? Are they preparing for it? What sort of shape are the Syrian armed forces in at this stage? Well, they're, they're preparing for it in the sense that they are dispersing their forces. They're, they're uh, taking uh, uh, forces out of assembly uh, points where one, one weapon could destroy a lot of equipment and, and moving it around so that uh, 
uh, you don't lose as, as many uh, uh, pieces of equipment in uh, simply to one missile. And one, one thing they're doing is uh, putting aircraft at the uh, Damascus uh, civilian airport, uh, no doubt on the theory that uh, uh, the U.S. will not attack a uh, civilian, uh, civilian facility. Well, David Martin at the Pentagon, thank you. Sure thing.